Hey everybody, happy Monday night. Welcome to Monday Night Live in Lexington, you guys. My name is Katherine Kaufman, and I'm a psychic medium here in Lexington, Kentucky. Welcome to my Every Monday Night Show. This is where we discover what and who we are in this journey called life. I am going to start the chat with the link to uh, my YouTube channel where, you guys, if you want to watch past shows, uh, the link is there, and you can go and look at the playlist Monday Night Live where you can go back and watch all the past shows. The reason that that's important is because this show, Time Slips, kind of follows up the last Monday Night show that we did on what is time, like how do we relate to time and what is time exactly. Let's do some quick shout-outs. Hey to Ricky Elkins. Hey, guy. How are you doing? Hope you're feeling okay. Big shout out to Melissa Begley and kiss to Miss Cleo, her favorite sidekick. Hi to Ina, Dana, Stephen Jagoda, what you cooking tonight? Uh, shout out to Yasmin and Janice and a special shout out to Bruce Walters. I hope you're doing okay, guy. It's really good to see you on here. Uh, shout out to Kim Asher, Brandy Wells, Dana Likens. Uh, shout out to Janice and Bowling Green. What's going on in Bowling Green? I wonder if you guys got that storm last night, too. Hey to Susie Llewellyn, Brandy Wells. Hey, girl. Hope you're doing okay. Um, and Charlotte Northcutt. And hey to all you guys over here on Instagram. Thanks for joining us. So before we get into tonight's content, and it's going to be just like last week when we were presenting the material on time, this is kind of technical as well. I'm going to try my best to explain it to you um, the best I can because it does get a little technical. But before we get into that, <clears throat> I want to tell you guys about my online webinar, August the 7th at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I'm doing uh, – this is – part two in a series of four about gemstones and uh you know the uses of so the first online webinar was the healing uses of gemstones and the second one coming up on august the 7th are the metaphysical uses of gemstones and it's an online webinar it's 15 dollars, and you get the online webinar, you get a downloadable PDF of the whole teaching, and you will get a video link to the recorded webinar once it's finished, and that'll all be emailed to you. So if you're interested, the link to the webinar is in the description post for tonight's uh, show. So just go up to the post and click the link and get yourself a ticket. Um, so now let's get into some time slips. First off, I want to ask anybody out there if, hey, to Michael Lawrence over here on Instagram, my son, Chucky Maker. Also, if you guys are Chucky fans, please support the Indiegogo fundraiser for Charles, a Chucky fan film. Uh, and I will put the link for the Indiegogo in the comments after the show. If you guys want to throw some extra change their way uh, and watch the movie short on the Indiegogo uh, fundraiser, it is awesome and phenomenal. Special shout out to Brick Gill Lawrence, my daughter-in-law, and Pamela Thompson. Thanks for joining us. Let me hop over really quick to the professional page. 
<clears throat> for any of you guys that are joining on the professional page, if you want to join the live chat, I did leave a link for you there to hop over here to the personal page where I am engaging in the chat. Shout out to Corey Southworth up north. I hope things are a little bit cooler for you there than they are here. And a shout out to Charlotte. And uh, let's see, well, let's get on to some content. So tonight's topic is time slips. I do want to know if anybody has had any experience with time slips. And if so, I would love for you to type your experience in the comments now so that uh, we can get a look at what kinds of things happen to you. But a time slip is a phenomenon of overlapping time waves, usually involving a trigger. Like many of the uh, accounts that I've read and uh, watched videos about <clears throat> had a storm happen before the actual time slip happened. And what it does is it can cause future or past experiences. So it's kind of like having either a past time um, interface with your time or a future time interfaced with your time. And it, it does seem to be location dependent, meaning that certain locations throughout the world have a higher incidence of time slips, particularly France and Liverpool. Very interesting, I thought, that those two areas had a very high incidence of time slips. So I'm going to read you a couple of experiences, and then we're going to go into why I'm bringing all of this up. Uh, shout out to Sam Armstrong. I hope you're healing okay. Uh, send love to your wife and your mom and your kid. And a shout out to Sachiko. How are you doing? Nice to see you on here. A shout out over here on Instagram to Connie Cron. Hey, Connie. So the first uh, one time slip that I'm going to read to you, it was uh, recounted by a British Royal Air Force Marshal, Sir Victor Goddard. And he had a strange experience in 1935 where he was flying over an abandoned airfield in Edinburgh. And he saw that it was overgrown and it had like uh, decrepit hangers and cows were grazing over it. Then he encounters a storm, which uh, is a trigger for the phenomenon. And it seemed to pull him back towards the airfield. So there's an element of magnetism or gravity involved here. The storm rapidly cleared as he passed over the same airfield that he had just flown over. Okay, now the airfield looked new with uh, planes that were painted yellow, which was unusual, and a monoplane he didn't recognize as being a part of the Air Force fleet. And the workers were dressed in blue overalls, which was also unusual because at that time, uh, the workers had all dressed in brown or were designated in brown uniforms. So all of these things were very strange to him until years later um, when the Air Force started actually painting their planes yellow and acquiring planes of the model that um, Sir Victor Goddard had seen. And also um, he did find out that the mechanics in the future were also wearing uh, regimented blue overalls. So that was very interesting. If any of you guys have any questions, just leave them in the comments. I'll try to uh, recount these things to you and watch the feed as I go down. Now, um, this time slip that I'm going to read to you um, is recounted in Liverpool. Okay, so in July 1996, and this is not the most recent one. I think that the most recent one that I read about was either 2006 or 2007. But in, and I found this one was interesting because it involved a, another witness. So in July 1996, in Liverpool's Bold Street, there was an off duty um, Maryside policeman, and he was um, going shopping with his wife in the city center. And it was on a Saturday afternoon. So he and his wife split up to buy from different shops. And um, 
so he went on to a he was going on to a local record store so as he was doing that a small 1950s box van crossed in front of him honking its horn in its progress the van's livery stated that it was from Kaplan's he looked down to his feet and realized that he stood in the middle of the road which I guess he was not crossing the road when he noticed that he was suddenly in the middle of the road after the van honked at him so he went ahead and crossed the road and saw that Dylan's bookstore now had a Crips signage over the entrance and moreover the shop was selling women's handbags and shoes rather than books so he wanted to go to the record store that was in the bookstore um, but he noticed that it was a, a woman's shop so looking around the street he realized that the people around him were dressed in the fashion from 1940 1950 but strangely there was another woman in her 20s that walked past him with a popular uh, brand name handbag and modern clothes that kind of reassured him that he wasn't you know to like he wasn't out there on his own totally um, so he smiled at the girl as she walked past and they both entered Crips which was supposed to be the bookstore record store as he followed her into the store the interior of the building changed in a flash to that back to that of the bookstore in 1996 so at that point he asked the young woman who had entered with him in modern clothing um, what she was doing there and if she thought the shop was a clothes store when she first walked in as well rather than a bookstore and uh, of course she agreed with him that she thought she was going to the bookstore and then it had changed into the woman's clothing store so in presenting this information on a talk show a lot of the people that called in on the talk show uh, were telling them that Crips and Kaplan's were actually businesses in Liverpool at the location in 1950 and uh, they were in that uh, exact location so that was confirmed by people who lived during that time and remembered being there so I thought that, that was really kind of cool let's do some waves over here on Instagram if it will let me there we go all right uh shout out to barbara bacon and crystal crazy hey guys uh lee palmer andrea eva pacor marquet and Teresa newberry danny owens bob schultz felicia noble thanks for joining us tonight and ac ryan if you guys have any questions let me know um so why am i bringing up this deal about time slips well it's very relative to what i do in my experience with time slips <clears throat> because when I do an on location walkthrough um, it's kind of a mediumship um, and mediumships do involve time slips it's kind of time slip if you will so I'm gonna tell you about one of my experiences doing a walkthrough that was pretty much strictly a time slip and it was totally accidental so uh, David and I were invited to some a good friends downtown for a Thanksgiving dinner and um, these people owned a, uh, a building downtown and they lived in the top of the building well so we were invited there and I was invited to kind of see what I sensed as I walked through the area and I noticed that there was a little bit of disconnect or dissension between um, the people that own the place because one was a believer and one was not. And uh, so I went ahead and did this kind of a mini walkthrough. And um, I could see that the place where the steps were was once an elevator um, to the side and it brought up. And, and the walls were different and I was showing them how the walls looked before and how there was a lift not exactly an elevator but like one of those old platform lifts 
and you know how the walls were gone from the area we were walking through and also the objects that were in that upstairs area were huge wooden barrels of i'm guessing you know alcohol but um those were stacked up through the building and so uh through talking to these two individuals um i did find out that that is exactly how the building was in fact the one partner who was not a believer went to the back room and got uh, photographic evidence of the way the building was before in the time that i was talking about uh, which had to be 1800s i'm guessing maybe even a little bit earlier um, <clears throat> so this is a, a type of i feel like a type of time slip and when we were talking about you know how time is relative last week and if you want to go watch that episode hit that YouTube link in the comment section and go to the playlist Monday Night Live and watch the last episode. So um, let's see if there's any comments. Hey to Susan. And Leah says, today I've been on a 1960s film location today. Awesome. That sounds wonderful. And shout out to Rhonda. Thanks for joining us. And Missy Bennett. So, um, you know, the important part about the story is that, <clears throat> you know, he was able to produce photographic evidence of exactly what I was talking about. And so the, the partner that was the believer kind of was giving him a hard time about not believing, but he was trying to explain that, that you know, it's different when you can produce concrete evidence about whatever somebody's saying so one of the things i really love to do is to do a historical walkthrough and that's one of my specialties is historical walkthroughs of different properties and uh in successive shows i want to cover we may be able to cover a little bit here tonight maybe just touch on it things you can do to induce a temporary time slip and why you would want to do that so i found when i found that information i was just absolutely fascinated by it but a couple of things that you do to induce a time slip is working with or being in a historical area also uh, having the trigger present which would be either storm or elevated uh, solar activity or elevated uh, energy for certain times certain times of the year the energy is more elevated and we're going to get into that in a future episode but um, when we were talking about time in the previous episode the faster that you approach the speed of light time breaks down and time actually slows so i know that's hard to grasp but uh, what we were saying in the previous episode was that every everything has a location in space time and so it's almost like it has an address that you almost have to dial into to get and when we see a time slip happen what we're seeing are two addresses um, overlapping for a brief moment most time slips are extremely brief they don't last very long and uh, the person who's caught up in it is usually returned to their proper time um, and I'm thinking that and things are very tactile for these people they're seeing you know this other time uh, overlapping with theirs and they're also able to feel and touch uh if it's really cold say you know they can feel that it's cold so ina has a question i've always wanted to turn back time at the west baden baden hotel do you have, have you been there and have you seen previous times there no i haven't been there uh if you could give us a little bit more information on where that is and what uh like what are you interested in that particular location 
Um, so give us a little bit more details on it because I know there's probably several other people who would like to know as well. Hey to Susan and Christy, thanks for joining us. So trigger items are big. Um, and in the previous episode, we had talked about items being artifacts and why they're artifacts. And so artifacts I can use in a mediumship and it has to be an item that has the person's energy um, associated or imprinted on the item, but it has to be, you know, attentive energy, if that makes sense. In other words, you know, your car keys are an item that you may hold and use every single day, but you don't focus your attention and your real interest and focus on those car keys like it's not a cherished item. So it doesn't have a huge imprint of energy. It may have like a daily minute energy, but it doesn't have a huge imprint like, you know, your wedding band or something like that. So items that have the owner's extreme intention like gifts, wedding bands, certain items of clothing that bring a lot of comfort to that person are items that are artifacts. Now, artifacts are trigger items that can cause a time slip to happen. Um, and it does, uh, when you're using a trigger item, what it does is it also is a link to the vibration of that other time wave. So, hey to Andy, and a special shout out to Grace Bone Pale, big kisses, and Jasmine Lula, <laughs> Lula Lula. So Lee says, I dream of finding old rooms and big houses. That's awesome. Maybe if you get a little bit more detail on your dream, we can find out where those places are. Okay, so let's go on to, I want to present a little, like this is like a teaser of next week's show uh, on how to induce a temporary time slip. So the theory is that when particles travel faster than the speed of light, which they do, that time actually becomes distorted. And so we did see like theories from Nikola Tesla and Einstein regarding this. So Nikola Tesla theorized that cosmic rays and radio waves, when the conditions are right, can travel faster than the speed of light. Hard to believe, but this is a theory. Einstein stated that matter or waves of energy traveling faster than the speed of light would undergo time dilation or time distortion. And so that would be one of the incidents that could possibly cause a time slip to happen. So Ina says it's in southern Indiana near French Lick where there is also a resort hotel. Both were resort hotels having healing waters and were popular during the 1930s. Many wealthy people from Chicago came there. That is awesome. Now see, that would be the perfect place for me to do a historical walkthrough. To, and I wouldn't want to know any additional details about the property before I did the walkthrough because I feel like the less I know detail-wise, the better I do in gathering information because there's no prejudice involved of, you know, preclusive um, information. So um, now, when we're talking about inducing a temporary time slip, we um, we were talking about elevated solar activity and elevated uh, energy. So this, these are theories now, but I'd say they're theories that are well worth testing. So uh, the higher, higher solar flux activity and increased KP levels, which may be acting as a step down transformer from the high solar energies are occurring are one of the things that supposedly produce time slips. Now, I know a lot of you don't know what KP levels are, so I looked it up for you. The KP index is measured geomagnetic disruption caused by solar activity. So, and this relates to, you know, every now and then I post a uh, an alert for a geomagnetic storm, 
right? And geomagnetic storms can affect our physical health a lot. Migraines, uh, anxiety, depression, uh, so much so that a lot of airplanes are looking into special shielding for um, their passengers from this geomagnetic activity. So on the KP range, zero is calm. That means the solar activity is calm. But if you get on up towards nine, that's like a major geomagnetic storm. So these events that occur trigger time slips. And so if you know that there's a geomagnetic storm, there's techniques that we're going to go over next week on how to induce a temporary time slip. But you need to be aware if there's a geomagnetic storm, if there's an electrical storm happening, like a thunderstorm, then the incidence of having a time slip happening is higher. And I hope this is making sense. Hey to Jennifer Cavanaugh. So Ina says, if you do, I would love to be there. <laughs> yes, absolutely. You will be the first one to know, I promise. So now what does KP stand for? Um, because a lot of places refer to KP index, but no one really says what the KP index is. So KP is simply uh, a German person's name who helped discover this index. And the last name was Kinenzeifer, <laughs> and it's Kinenzeifer Prediction Index. So it's a way to predict uh, solar activity and the weather uh, reactions to it. Hey to Michelle Wagner. Um, so I want to go over one particular way to induce a temporary time slip, and it's been written about a lot, and there are videos on it. And I'm going to devote one particular show to it. Uh, and that is the heart math exercise, and it's also called quick coherence technique. And it's basically a way of connecting the brain and the heart energy because the human heart puts out up to 10 times more electrical activity than the human brain. So the heart math exercise is used to generate like a torus field of energy by using unconditional love. And this field then creates like a time bubble from which emotions from the future can be detected. Isn't that cool? I think that that is just awesome. So we're going to go into the quick coherence technique and the heart math exercise um, probably next week. But tonight I'm going to um, give you, let's see. Okay. Let's see what, okay. I'm going to give you a clue as to the times to induce a temporary time slip because some times of the year are higher than others. Now we're not in that category right now because the chi flow is highest during the months from October or August through December with the strongest flow in late October. Okay. So what that means is because we are in July, we're almost in August. Uh, once we hit August, if we have like August and a geomagnetic storm and a thunderstorm, that would be the perfect time to induce a temporary time slip. So those are the time periods when it's most prevalent. Um, so I, one other thing I wanted to tell you guys that uh, they did measurements on stone circles and they've been shown to have time distortion properties as well. When the sun's solar flux levels are above 4.0 or during condition red periods, and condition red periods are on that KP index. So during those particular times, stone circles have been shown to have time distortion properties. This is just mind-blowing for me. Um, and I'll tell you what, after reading some of this stuff, I definitely am going to try to induce a temporary time slip for myself and I will let you know if I have any success. Um, but I want you to really think about this heart math exercise, maybe do a little bit of research on it before the next show next week. Um, it's a real easy exercise to do 
and um, the technique in here to induce a temporary time slip is for emotions to be detected from the future very interesting we're also going to go into um, more about other ways to induce a time slip um, location place memory like i was telling you my experience with um, reading that building um, most hauntings when they occur why they occur why they're considered time slips too all of this stuff is just absolutely fascinating and as a matter of fact a lot of it really validated things that i knew to be true but i didn't know you know the reason why so now now i am pretty much figuring out why um hey to rolando thanks for joining us so um like i said if you want to know more keep watching we're going to delve into it a lot deeper next monday we're going to go into techniques to do this and i am going to try to do one myself um before next week so i can present you with the results special shout out to tony biz uh again if you guys are any of you guys are chucky fans i'm gonna leave the link to the indiegogo in the comments to support this chucky uh, fan film called Charles. Go to the Indiegogo link and watch that movie short. It is phenomenal. Uh, we're bringing back Chucky and we're, he's going to be scary again. So thanks you guys for watching. I will see you again next Monday. Go to the YouTube channel, hit subscribe, hit the bell notifications. Watch for the next show on next Monday Night Live on here on Facebook. And uh, if you get a chance, hop over to my professional page, Katherine Kaufman Psychic Medium, and give it a like. And I will see you next Monday. Kisses from Kentucky. Bye, guys. Y'all have a good week.